All right, so I'm over at my brother's house. We're gonna be wiring up his table saw for 240 instead of 120. And first thing you wanna do is look at the user manual and see what size wire you need for the amperage that you're gonna be pulling. So you can look at the nameplate here and you can see that 120, 240 for 120 volt, it's 13 amps. 240 at 6.5 so you come up to this chart for 240 volt we're going to be less than 50 foot 6 to 10 amps so we're looking at 18 gauge uh, wire so the wire that I brought is actually rated for up to 600 volts so we're good on that and it is 16 American wire gauge, which is the lower the number, so 18, 16, 14, 12. As the number gets lower, the size of the wire gets bigger and it can handle more. So you're good on that. And what I'm going to be doing is leaving the existing cord, the existing 120 plug, in case he ever wants to put it back. I don't have to rewire the switch. All we've got to do is switch it in the motor. Um, don't have to do anything funky like that, change out the plug ends. This is upside down, but it does say it's good for 300 volts if it'll focus. And this is also 16 gauge. It's not focusing there, but there you go. 16 gauge, 300 volt. Always, always, always unplug first before you start working on anything. So unplug it, put it in a place where no one's going to be messing with it. So I'm going to go ahead and remove this access panel here and uh, show you how we get at the motor. All right, so got the access panel removed. I removed the lower and the upper access panel because I'm actually going to have to crawl underneath here. But if you follow the wire in, uh, you'll be able to kind of feel it. It actually goes down underneath to this little access point here. Little tip, a uh, little pro tip here, if you ever have one of these that the motor stops working on it, this little red button is a reset. Similar to your garbage disposal, um, if something gets jammed up and the motor starts to overload, it, a lot of these, especially on the higher end side, do have a reset. So you go ahead and get this little access panel removed and I'll show you what it looks like inside. All right, so I've got the covers off the motor. Um, normally if this is something you have to rewire internally, you're going to see like a wiring diagram or something inside here that will explain to you uh, which wires to make up to which for 140 volts versus, uh, I'm sorry, 120 versus 240. There's nothing like that on here, uh, on either one of these two uh, uh, cover plates. And the reason for that is this one is actually designed to be pretty straightforward. It's, I mean, I can't believe it's it's this complicated. It's 115 there. Now it's set up for 240. Um, I didn't realize that was like that. I basically took a look at how the wires are set up here, saw that the neutral was coming into this little reset switch uh, right here, and then saw it was going out from there into this little box. So took it apart and saw that that's what that was. So. By switching it to 240, that's all you got to do. Um, so leaving this 120 volt option on here is definitely going to be the way to go. Because if he ever wants to change this in the future back to 120, all he's got to do is take this, uh, this plate off here, take these two screws out, and switch it back. Okay, so in terms of building the cord for this, you got a 120 volt female outlet uh, cord cap that on the brass colored one you're going to put the black wire on the zinc or green one you'll put the ground and then the neutral is going to go on the silver screw on the other side the only one that really matters is that you get the ground on the green screw and uh, the other two shouldn't matter i'm not sure if rotation phase rotation is going to matter on this or not once i get it wired up i'll let you know um, but in order to make this up you basically want to go back about an inch and just lightly run a razor along the outside of the insulation and then you can pull this back
So you want to strip back about a quarter inch of wire, maybe a little bit more. And just twist it with your fingers so that you don't have any strands going any other places within there. Make sure that you get this rubber piece on there first. Make sure you're good and watertight. I'm gonna feed this one through there. You can just shove one of these in each one of those. And like I said, make sure that the ground gets in the green one. You can just tighten them up real good. You got it good and tight. Give each wire a little tug, make sure it doesn't back out at all. Like I said, with the phase rotation, it is possible that the saw blade may run backwards. It shouldn't because this is only a 240, it's not like a three phase. But if it does, swap the two. That should take care of that problem. I don't think that'll happen, but just in case. So, in order to put this back together, there actually is a little notch on here. It has to be lined up with this. So you're going to get those set up with the screw there. And you just push this down on there. And you'll see there actually is a notch on this as well. It has to line up with the notch in here. So you just pinch these three prongs together. Line it all up. And as you tighten it down, you'll start to feel it tightening on the cord, those three clamps on the back. That prevents the cord from getting pulled out the back of the plug and also helps it give a good watertight seal. So, still shouldn't use electricity and water, but it's good to know if there's a little bit of liquid dripping or sawdust or anything, it's not going to get in there. So that's pretty much how it's done. All right, so like I said, I got the regular 120 volt style plugged into this side. And over here, if you don't already have a 240 volt plug, uh, get a licensed electrician to do it. You're gonna have two of the prongs that are about horizontal instead of like this one where they're both vertical. So yeah, plug that in there. And then we'll go test this out. All right, moment of truth. Looks like it's running. And it's running the right direction, fantastic. So again, I don't think you'll have an issue with the direction it's running unless you run into a three-phase motor, in which case, probably gonna be a little more complicated than this video is gonna help you with. Uh, you may be wondering why you would want to make it a 240 instead of 120. It's actually a lot lighter on the motor because it's using a lot less amperage. Um, because it uses less amperage as well, you're less likely to trip circuit breakers. Um, obviously you're going to be on a different circuit, but if you're running like a table saw as well as your um, dust extractor or also trying to run a planer or something like that, do a router, you're, yeah, it's going to save you on uh, going and resetting breakers. So. Hope you enjoyed that video and uh, this is how it's done.